So yesterday we were looking at how to calculate things like uh, this, an equilibrium constant K, where we were determining the ratio of concentrations of products to reactants. And the value of that K helped us to decide if the reaction was going to be products or reactants favored. Another way of saying those things is that the forward or the reverse reaction is favored. What we're going to be looking at today is what we could do to disrupt that equilibrium. So when we were looking yesterday um, at that 50 milliliters going back and forth and how many reactants we had, how many products we had, we're going to see ways that we could change or alter that reaction where it disrupts that equilibrium, where you wouldn't have the same rate forward and backwards anymore. So there's three common ways to adjust equilibrium. Uh, the first way is to change the amounts of reactants or products. What that does is it puts a different amount of chemical into the reaction. So if we go back uh, to our equilibrium one we were looking at yesterday, this guy, right? If I dumped a whole bunch of water into one of those beakers, suddenly we're going to be able to pass back more than 50 milliliters out of one of those guys. So changing the amounts in the reactant speaker or the product speaker is going to mess up equilibrium. A second way that we could disrupt that equilibrium is to change the temperature at which the reaction takes place. We looked yesterday at a reaction that gave us a temperature right here. And we talked about how you don't have to do anything with that temperature, but it does affect equilibrium. Chemicals tend to dissolve better at warmer temperatures. So if we ran this reaction at 90 degrees, let's say, instead of 25 degrees, what that would do is probably change these equilibrium molarities. They'd probably be higher because those chemicals would dissolve better at those warmer temperatures. Or if you ran it at a colder temperature, those equilibrium concentrations would probably be lower. So if you mess with the temperature, it's going to mess with your K value. It's going to disrupt your equilibrium. And the third major way you'll see dis equilibrium disrupted is to change the pressure at which the reaction takes place. Changing the pressure only affects gases. We'll talk about those pressure changes a little bit more as we get into some examples. So there was a French scientist named Le Chatelier, that's how you say his name there, and what he basically said is if a stress is applied to a reaction, the reaction will try to relieve that stress. and re-establish equilibrium. So when we talk about stresses, what do we mean by that, right? If a stress is applied to a reaction, the stresses that they're talking about are these three things up here. Changing the amounts, changing temperatures, changing pressures. All those things would mess up your equilibrium somehow. The reaction basically says, oh, I was doing good. I was in this nice balance, harmony, equilibrium, and then you did something to screw it up. So the reaction tries to fix itself and reestablish that equilibrium. 